All right, and now part two. So thank you to those who uh, <laughs> who watched part one. Perfect timing, you know. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. This is this is the perfect uh, scenario, uh, perfect timing to uh, to kind of explain this whole idea of of the rat race, right? So uh, I have about six or seven minutes left, and I figured I would just kind of um, you know finish up for those who uh, who can make the second piece of this. Great. If if you can't, no worries. Hopefully, Alan can do some magic. You know, he's a he's a whiz with this stuff. So hopefully, he can do some magic and string both episodes together. Uh, not sure he'll be able to. But here we go. Here's kind of the final piece. So so the idea of it was, you know, that we all sort of have this rat race uh, that we're in the midst of. You know, we're, we're kind of always in the go, go, go. And, and a big part of that is the frustration um, of, you know, the frustration of not having what we want, you know, now. And, and, and like this delayed gratification idea. And, and, you know, and some would say sort of like, you know, the idea of like, in whose time, you know, like, like we have this concept, we have this desire and this frustration of, I want this thing now, I want this, you know, result, whatever it is, I want, you know, success, I want, you know, um, all of those things that I hear about, I, I, I don't want to have to do things uh, the hard way, I don't want to have to play the marathon game, I want to play the short game, I want to win faster, I want to be more efficient. And, and those are all awesome things. I mean, there's just something there, you know, really, really cool and strong about playing a game of efficiency and trying to, uh, you know, reduce waste and, and finding ways to do things better. I think there's a real play there. Um, you know, oftentimes that's what we're selling. We're, we're selling that exact concept, you know. So when I go into a, a business and I sit down with them and, and, and get past that initial phase where we're just kind of like feeling things out, we really can get into having a conversation what we're selling is a better way. We're selling a better way to do things. And, and, and because of that, um, there's a real desire to push, 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 push and get to the end result. There's a competitive nature of things. Um, but on the flip side, I think sometimes we forget about the balance of that, the counterbalance, the idea of sometimes we just need to slow down and, and, and remember and reflect on what we've got. What are the achievements so far? You know, I, I just saw an indicator pop up on my phone um, for uh, Monique Carruth, and she had put something on, you know, on Facebook today and tagged me on it about Summer of Move. And it was just so cool because she's talking about, like, within her community, getting out and doing things and, and, and trying to make small and steady changes and that it's, it's happening. You know, yesterday um, on the Rising Tide feed, Alan posted something about, you know, sort of his health journey and, and, the, and the steady improvements he's made in a relatively short amount of time. But the answer, I mean, if you really looked at it, the, the answer was the consistency, the fact that he's been consistently working at something over time and he's getting the results. Um, you know, uh, when I look back on it and I hear people kind of like, you know, talking about, hey, I, I want to be in this space. I want to get out and do things. You know, I, I keep pushing back this idea of it takes time. It takes effort. Um, it's not fast. Uh, it's a marathon. You're going to learn every single day how to put one foot, foot, foot forward. It's going to be one more step in the right direction. And that when we do that, when we take the time to actually do that, when we have a little bit of that cold shower of life, you know, when, when, when you get hit with the cold water and you get that kind of like reset reflect moment, um, you realize uh, that it, it is that marathon that you enjoy. It's the training. It's the time you've put in. It's the, the, the scars you've gained along the way. It's all of the hard work and, and what it shows. And so I guess what, what I'm trying to say here, I guess my point is, is to those of you who are at that phase of life, um, and, and all of us at some degree are, where you, like me, want results tomorrow. You want to see you know the, the finish line. You want things to be done um, you know, and, and you've got real stresses and pressures. I mean, it's not like this is like candy land. It's not like, the, you know, this is all bliss. I mean, you've got pressures. You own things. These things, you know, there are bills to pay. There are mouths to feed. There are jobs to be done. All of that creates a sense of urgency and a sense of stress. Um, I think that what that does on the one hand is push us, and that's not a bad thing, but sometimes we just need to pause and reflect. Um, and so I'm just going to wrap it up with this, and it's a little bit of a shout out, and, and I don't know the whole story, but, um, you know, so I don't know if you know uh, Kristen Carlin, if anybody on this knows her. Um, I've gotten to know her a little bit through ICE, um, and, and I just saw a post this morning on Facebook. She had spent a week kind of off the grid with her family on vacation, um, and it just, to me, like looking at those pictures, they look happy. You know, they, they look like they're having a great time. And I'm sure it wasn't perfect. And I'm sure all the pictures weren't exactly the perfect picture. And, and I'll let her comment to it. Maybe next Monday we'll let her get on. But the, the thing that struck me about her uh, story was that she said it was so great to be off the grid for a week. To just shut down. To take time to pause and reflect. And, and in a sense, recharge. 
And although I guess sometimes you can do it the way that I did it with you, you get a real quick shot in the face with bright, you know, super cold water, you know, super freezing cold water and, and have that realization um, that you need to pause for a second. Uh, or uh, maybe you can do it voluntarily. And then if we do it voluntarily and if we take time to invest and reinvest back in our own selves um, and, and show people that we do that and that there are benefits of doing so, maybe that's really all we need to sell the message to everyone else that it's worth doing. You know, we often get into this conversation. We had the conversation again last night, uh, you know, in, in our unit five on, on our latest cohort about like, you know, show me the money kind of a conversation. Like, where's the ROI? How do we show that, that this is worth, you know, like uh, uh, paying for? Um, you know, and then, you know, on the one side of me, like, yeah, we can go down that road and pay attention to the data. And the data is there. Uh, but on the other side, sometimes it's just, well, listen, let's think about what the alternatives are. You know, you own this thing. You know, it's the one you get. You carry it with you everywhere you go. You get all the ups and downs of ownership. Um, the cold shower of life, unfortunately, can be, uh, you know, a cancer diagnosis. It can be a heart attack. It can be a stroke. Um, you know, those things happen. They're happening everywhere. They're happening to people that we care about and people that we love. Uh, but they don't have to happen, you know. Uh, the internal water heater can blow up because you don't know what you're looking at and you don't know how to keep it working you know, and you can wind up with cold water in your house if you're like me because you don't know what you're looking at when the thing needs maintenance or care or you don't know that, that they only last 10 or 12 or 15 years or whatever it is. Bottom line is, is that I own the water heater. I get to pay for it when it breaks. We own the system. We get to pay for it when it breaks. It will break. If we don't give it some maintenance and care, it will break. And I guess that's the message to take forward to anybody, that if you get that cold shower every once in a while and you can pause and you can relax and you can take a second, whether even if you're forced to, to just recoil and, and take a second to realize like how good we've got it. You know, if today the water heater breaks, like, man, that's, that's a win because it could be something way worse. If you get a chance to unplug, take it. If you get a chance to spend some time with your family, take it. Um, there will always be shortcuts. There will always be people out there who are trying to show that the shortcut is the way to go. And what I'm going to tell you is that the ownership and the marathon, the win at the end, is the way to go. To a little salute to, to all those people who celebrated Father's Day yesterday, all those families that got to spend some time with their dads, um, and, and really all of those people who, who take that ownership mentality. There's the time. Broken into two segments, but there's the time. If you take that ownership mentality um, and you have a chance to say, hey, I, I own this thing. Um, maybe it's this thing. I own this thing. I carry it with me every day. I might as well put a little maintenance and care to it uh, because we certainly know that, uh, that, that more can be done on the long term. The marathon will always beat the sprint uh, if given enough time. Always. No one sprints a marathon, no matter how fit you are. Bottom line is, is that we sometimes have to have that cold shower to wake us up. So I start my week that way. I hope you don't start your week that way, but maybe you can use this information to kind of keep you on track. Have a good week. Have a great Monday. Summer of Moo starts this Friday. Jump on. Be involved. Several thousand dollars ready to go for... for